thing. Now, I want to kind of get like kind of focus on the the Starbucks issue that's going on. Starbucks, the difference between them and McDonald's is they are not a franchise. That's right. So yeah, that's, they're yes. kind of on. They're on the fucking hook right now. Like yeah, they're they're that's screwed. Right. How was this? How was this story? How was this progressing? I, I, that's all. I well, know. yeah, the, uh, yeah. Good, good question. Uh, I mean, Starbucks. Uh, yes, that's right. They they didn't franchise the franchise all their little a lot of those tours I, w- I will make one point though next time you go to an airport and you and, the, and you mm. buy a cup of coffee from Starbucks or you go to a hotel uh, or your grocery store have you uh, is there a Starbucks in your, okay yeah, yeah there's some to say yeah okay those are um, what do they call them Th- those are, are kiosks they're called kiosks they look like regular Starbucks stores and there the employees are not employed by Starbucks. They're employed, they're employed by, by Safeway. Or that's whatever. right. That's right. And yeah. they're unionized often. If, if the Safeway is unionized, they're unionized. So, so the Starbucks is going on about, oh, if we unionize, if they unionize all everyone's this sort of wonderful, warm, cozy culture of Starbucks, we were destroyed. Well, you, there are thousands of, of, of union baristas in, employed in, uh, in in Safeway or Ralph's or or uh, some of your local airport or your local hotel or wherever it is. And, and the coffee is pretty good, and, and the atmosphere is fine too. So anyway, but 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 one reason that Starbucks didn't franchise these is they, they 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 wanted to sort of they wanted to sort of have be distinctive, you know. So they 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 and and Starbucks did hire a kind of you know college kids, you know, more than McDonald's would. Uh, they hired you know they were they were kind of LGBTQ friendly, uh, etc. Um, well, this was this is precisely the the strata of of young. Young workers who are today very much in motion. I mean, I think they feel betrayed by employers during the pandemic. You know, they they I think they feel that uh, you know maybe they that the co- the college education they've gotten you know hasn't you know paid off, and uh, so you, you now have a, a kind of social movement at Starbucks. Uh, and you know, I think there are more than two hundred of these stores which have gone through the regular, you know, election process run by the National Labor Relations Board, and they have um, voted in some cases overwhelmingly to form a union. But that's not the end of the story, unfortunately, because. Oh. Uh, yeah, can I continue on? Or? Oh yeah, no, I'm sorry. Uh, I was just gonna. I wanted to kind of add to what you were saying i used to work for oh, starbucks sure. and I'm, I'm actually part of a um like I, I experienced all of the things that the union has talked about with the just continually cutting labor like i was there uh i was there until the pandemic started and then i was laid off and leading up to that uh in the previous fall there were so many times like everything was kind of going well and then just out of nowhere they kneecapped our labor uh, to where we could only have, we would have like seven people on the floor at a time Mm -hmm. to then we went to having like three, if we were lucky. Um, and it, they just said that we weren't earning it. And then literally a week later, they, uh, a week later, they came out, uh, with a press release saying that, uh, Kevin Johnson, the CEO had gotten like a $22 million bonus, uh, and just all of those things. And there's actually, uh, also too, it was just settled. Uh, it's uh, Fredrickson versus Starbucks, a, a class action lawsuit that uh, a lot of people signed on to about uh, uh, people not being given promotions that they were promised or being discriminated against for some sort of minority status or whatever for that. And that's already been settled. Hmm. Yeah, let me mention one thing. So I actually, um, if you if you work for one of the things that Starbucks claims that's good is they say, oh, if you work, you know, you get health insurance, okay? If you were, and and or we, you know, we you can take these free college courses or, or something like that, and you, and basically this is this is, you have to work twenty hours a week, uh, f- you know, to to qualify for these things. Now, one of the here's one of the things about the boss, and about individualism. The boss, the manager at every Starbucks. I mean, this is not some distant manager. This is a manager who knows you. They can determine whether or not, and this is the most important power they have, they can determine whether you work 20 hours a week or not. And if they 
cut your hours to below 20 hours, so you don't, it's not just a question of losing some pay. It's also you're no longer eligible for health insurance. Mm -hmm. And that was the funny thing that always happened is that whenever it was coming up for the quarterly review for uh, insurance status, suddenly everybody had trouble getting hours. That's right. At a unionized, in one of those Starbucks at Safeway, and I looked at the contract and talked to the union guys, you are guaranteed 20 hours a week. You're guaranteed it. It's in the contract. It's a violation of the contract. So, I mean, I just have no, it's, it's Starbucks, despite all its warm and fuzzy, uh, 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 you know, and, and, and kind of culturally, uh, you know, avant-garde nature, it's a fucking authoritarian workplace. And, you know, and, <laughs> yes. and, 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 and that does not lead to individualism. It leads to cowering and conformity and the worst kind of oppression. So I, to, so all of these, uh, these, these workers are, are trying to, to, to be able to be free to express themselves. And I think they, and they, they're finding they have to do that through collective action. Now, unfortunately, Starbucks has a lot of resources on its on its side, they aren't just money. It has lots of money too. The labor law is rotten. It's terrible. It doesn't. It, it cannot force Starbucks to negotiate a contract with each of those two hundred stores that have actually formally voted and been certified with a union. In fact, Starbucks. It's unquestionably the case that their strategy is delay, 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 delay put it off, Stonewall, et cetera. And given the fact that late, the turnover at Starbucks is, I don't know, probably 100% a year, right? You know, oh, let's wait a year and know what will be I've left. Been, I've know? been gone from Starbucks. After I was gone oh. from Starbucks for maybe like eight months, the entire store, I think, except yeah. for maybe three people had turned over. Yeah. They want that. They want that. The idea of having a career. The other difference between a unionized Starbucks and a, and a Safeway, and a other is that you can have a career if you work at a unionized place. By a career, I mean you start off. The starting wage is still pretty low, but you, but you know you know that you every year you'll be there. The, the the labor turnover is not so great. You'll get a wage increase. You'll get a promotion. And after twenty years, you'll be making enough money, to, you know, to, to to have to pay a mortgage, to have health insurance, to have retirement. At Starbucks. I guarantee, I guarantee, and and at McDonald's and 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 Walmart, they want turnover. They want it. They want it. They don't want anyone. Re- they don't want anyone retiring from there. <laughs> you know, they want they want turnover. And that's and that that's that's a recipe for social uh, chaos and disruption. I mean, if if no one has a permanent job, well, it may be exciting for a few years when you're 18 years old. But by the time you you have a uh, you know a spouse, a mortgage, and a dog and, and a car payment, you want something predictable. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like, what are what other types of labor disputes are going on in the United States right now that maybe aren't a part of the the narrative that's going on in the news media cycle? Yeah. Well, okay. Um, let's see. Well, uh, what's this? well, lots of lots of things are happening. Uh, uh, well, I, well, I mean, many of them are are kind of. Again, organizing. That is the big, the big um, uh, uh, problem confronting, well, the union movement certainly, and I would say working people in general is that uh, the resistance to forming new unions in new industries has been enormous, and therefore the union movement has in fact shrunk dramatically. And so the, the the most important thing is organizing. And so we see that now at Amazon. Uh, we see that at Delta Airlines. They're trying to organize stewardesses. We see that uh, in some of the auto, the, the Japanese-run auto plants, which, which are not organized. We see that in lots and lots of places. We see it in the, re, actually, the interesting thing is retail. Retail, again, young people, lots of turnover, um, uh, kind of people would go in there with the, the expectation of, of not creating a career. Now we see in retail from everything from Apple stores to REI stores to uh, um, uh, to um, uh, uh, you know other kind of retail outlets, a, a kind of an organi- organizing impulse is taking place, and that's a, that's a new thing. That that is a new thing. Um, and the other thing, by the yeah. way, is is in 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 kind of. Uh, categories of workers which we thought of as as you know it, nah, they, they were they were kind of uh, I don't know uh, uh, 
like museum people or or journalists or or teachers of various sorts or 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 uh, 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 publishing people you know you you, you know talk about uh, you know they were thought no they aren't interested in unionism well now there's a big impulse uh, that's that, that's happening so that's one thing kind of just organizing I want to emphasize that the other thing is just raising wages uh, <coughs> it used to be oh fifteen dollar you've heard of the campaign for fifteen dollars right well that should really be thirty dollars yeah. now. Uh, <laughs> to be thirty bucks, uh, because fifteen bucks isn't what it used to be. And uh, I'll make a prediction right now. Um, Eleven months from now, the largest strike in American hist in American history for the last fifty years is going to take place. It's going to take place uh, at in at United Parcel Service, where three hundred and 25,000 workers who are organized by the Teamsters, and the Teamsters have just had a reform leadership um, taken over, uh, they will go on strike at UPS uh, for higher wages and better conditions, and, 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 they, and, the, and they will, it will be a, the kind of strike we used to have 50, 60 years ago. That is a strike that is clearly going to set the pattern for American wages and working conditions for, for many, many hundreds of thousands or maybe millions of people, other, other people. Um, and this is going to happen. It's going to happen on July 1, 2023, when the current contract expires, because uh, these UPS worker people, they're, they're very busy, you know, <laughs> you know, if you buy anything from, yeah. uh, right? Yeah. You, yeah. And they got a lot of work. Uh, but the wages have lagged, and there's going to be a huge, gigantic strike. And it's going to mean that um, FedEx, which is non-union, is going to be watching very closely. And I guarantee you, it, when UPS wins, and I think the workers will win at UPS, FedEx will instantly raise its wages as well. And that means that all everyone in the whole, this whole giant logistics industry, from the warehouses to the truck drivers, we're going to have a we're going to have a titanic struggle in one, in eleven months i will make a <laughs> for you right now it's not blair Holy mountain shit. it won't be blair mountain but it'll be it'll be big okay. it'll be big and i and I, I i you remember remember what i said oh dude 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 i'm gonna put i'm gonna put a reminder on my calendar and i'll be reaching July out 1, to you and we're gonna be having a podcast. this strike this will not Just be settled because the workers are ready to go there's a reform leadership there's radicals in in the teamsters union uh the teamsters for good reason they have a bad reputation they've, they've been some terrible things but right now it's led by, jimmy hoffa baby led by reformers and there's going to be this titanic strike i guarantee it <laughs> Holy smokes! You got you got any inside sources? Don't reveal them here. But like, uh, you, you are you talking to someone prepare, on the inside? Yes, they're, this they're preparing for it right now. They're preparing for this strike right now. Right now. So you not not the you not the not the parcel United States Post. No, 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 no. The, you know, you know, the UPS like, United United Parcel Service. That's yeah, the, it's yeah. the private firm. They would the, you know the brown yeah, trucks, yeah, yeah, the brown, yeah. you know brown uniforms, brown brown yeah. trucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I just wanted to make yeah. sure we're we're clear yeah. there. That is fascinating. So then that's going to affect Fed. What about Amazon though? Because Amazon is definitely getting into the logistics right, game as well. Right, this right. is an area that I'm right, very right. like they are they are those little yeah. You reason. see those trucks running around with the low Amazon. Well, again, once again, that's fissured employment. Those are independent contractors. Those are not actually. Again, they have they have the Amazon uniform. They have the Amazon truck. Uh, by the way, the same is true with FedEx. Fed, the, all those FedEx guys running around. The, the, those are they're independent contractors. They the, 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 they they have to paint their trucks exactly the way FedEx wants. But they are they are legally considered independent contractors. It's a scam. It's a it's a, it's a, it's a uh, it's like a, nothing more than a than a than a carnival scam where they they're denied social security, they're denied unemployment insurance, they're denied uh, health uh, uh, health insurance, but you know because oh we're, oh you're an independent contractor. Well, they they they're every every minute of their of their work life is controlled by FedEx. It's that's what that's what it's, that's that's what that's one of the big problems facing labor. The this this really effort to to legally deconstruct what is a worker you know i but okay i do i do i think i might depart somewhere because i feel like i i met someone years ago and this could be complete bullshit but i think you can start a little like logistics company delivering amazon like doing D delivering Amazon packages and whatnot, like they'll pay you, right? So you could have, you could buy right. a, a few Sprinter vans, hire a few guys, right. or maybe not, maybe you just do it yourself. But let's say you hire a few guys, 
right? And and you you make sure that the contract's negotiated favorably, and you have your you're in business for yourself. And then as a employer, I think because of Obamacare, you have to have insurance if you have workers. So like that's not that's if you have if you have your own business and you're delivering for Amazon, like it's not. Let's say even if you are an independent con- a contractor, wouldn't it be at the behest of the individual to to you know if you're ma- if you're making you know decent coin, right? You could pay technically pay for insurance or, or get something right or to get a health savings account and then invest that. But <clears throat> let's say you don't do that, but get a health get a health savings account. You you have a rainy day. Like, don't you think that there there should be maybe a, a little bit of a of responsibility on the individual. No, I mean, I, no. I, I, the reason I'm, is no, <laughs> no. You're wrong. I love it. No, right. I no. Think and the reason no. is okay. that who, who's setting who's, who's setting why. the rates? Who's determining how much you, the, the, this person gets paid for every pa- for every every package that's, that's delivered, and they, and they have to deliver uh, and, and the quota. For, no, the the crucial things about that business are entirely determined by Amazon and not by the individual. The only thing the individual can do is exploit themselves. Or their workers, and by self exploitation, a lot of that that means you know working fourteen hours a day and making below minimum wage, which is what can happen when you when when they aren't paying enough. So the answer is no. And in fact, the but California not- legislature has uh, passed AB five, a law which made that I- everything you just described illegal. Okay, now these companies are so- fighting back, but uh, you know and they don't like it because they want to exploit their workers, uh, but it's illegal, and uh, according to the, in California, and so you, you know if if in other words if it if it squawks like a duck if it walks like a duck it's a duck in other words it's an employer if the employer controls what, what you make you know what your, your schedule you know what kind of uniform you have it's an employer they may call you an independent contractor they may call you an entrepreneur they may put um, advertisements on tv about how happy you are but you're a worker and they're the employer and the answer is uh that that, that we shouldn't fall for that bullshit I, I I don't know enough about this. I don't I don't know if you have to buy if you have to buy the sprinter van. Do. I don't understand what kind of contract you're signing with them or how much they're paying. I don't know if they're covering your fuel. I don't know if that's I don't know enough about this to to bring forth any counterpoints. Um, to your opinion, I'll default to you. I do. I should have maybe looked into this because I, well, I didn't know we were going to get here, but I am fascinated because I, I, I feel like it's a good opportunity, you know, maybe to to make a little extra coin. I, I don't. I, I feel like I don't know. I, I don't know. I need to. I, I don't know. I'm going to just default it. I don't know. I'll defer to you.